to a Jerboa workflow walkthrough. Um, in the previous four videos, I went over the installation as well as the basement program, slab program, um, as well as the Kiva workflow in more detail. Um, here, I really just want to show the implementation and some of the kind of differences in results that you see when you do use the custom ground temperatures um, versus the kind of default that Energy Plus uses, which I believe is 18 degrees Celsius. Um, you can also kind of go by the rule of thumb um, that you know, you, you set your ground temperature to two degrees lower than your set point temperature. Um, that's another approach, but I think that ultimately these ground temperatures are going to be a little more uh, accurate as well as provide a little more variance um, as the ground warms up over the summer and cools down during the winter. So we're just simulating on this kind of simple uh, box, I'm basically imagining that the back of it is sort of backed into a hill or something. So you have the, the slab here and then the two walls that are backed into the sides and the two fronts um, are yeah, outer edges, walls that are exposed to the outdoor air uh, on the other side. Um, this actually would be a really good case to use Kiva on because it has this variance, but we're just gonna go ahead and uh, use our custom ground temperatures and um, see what we get out of it. So I'm gonna, I, I already ran the basement program and have my string that has uh, um, been spit out of my run basement, um, uh, my run basement um, component. And so essentially what I've done is just set up a pretty, probably the laziest, easiest um, honeybee script you can. So I'm using a hot climate uh, with a kind of, well, I don't know, early 2000s building, uh, wood framed building, um, using a kind of residential program. Uh, obviously this is gonna be more of like a single family house, but no ASHRAE, uh, you know, single family home residential programs exist. So. Uh, we're going to use the mid-rise apartment, um, you know, set points, uh, which actually should match. I, I should have matched these with what I ran in the basement program, but for all intents and purposes, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it as it is. Um, got those windows and assembling uh, these into the model, and then we're visualizing uh, these by their boundary condition. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And I'll let it run and I'll start back up when it's done. So um, my model failed uh, initially because my uh, because my units were in millimeters, <laughs> um, but, but could easily remedied that. I don't have a DDY file, which is why um, Honeybee is complaining. Uh, I didn't include that next to the EPW in the folder here. I could have included it, but uh, I forgot. So uh, you should include a DDY file next to your EPW file um, so that you, you can use that for um, your design days and your simulation. Um, regardless, um, this is without custom temperatures. So I'm going to plug all of this in here. We're going to get uh, a set of EUI results. So we've got um, 110, I believe this is in um, kilowatt hours per meter squared. Okay, so that's maybe a little low, but okay, what not super important to us right now. Um, I'm going to internalize this and then I'm going to run this again, but I'm going to input. Uh oh, how do I do this? For some reason, my when I'm using when I'm on my VM, um, it doesn't oh, I'm gonna have to guess it doesn't let me scroll, which is incredibly annoying. Um, let me see if I can get up. so I have to save views and then okay okay um, I'm gonna move this down to string. And that's going to simulate again with the string um, of custom ground temperatures input uh, 
at the end of the IDF through the model to OSM component. So it's going to simulate quickly. And we've got an UI. And again, it's complaining, but that's OK. I'm going to internalize this result and then plug that in over here. So um, you can see that our total UI has gone up by 10 kilo hours per meter squared, which is pretty significant. Uh, you know, the difference between 110 and 120 is, is not um, trivial in terms of UI. Um, and my mouse is going to die. And so we're looking at heating at the top, cooling as the second item here. And if we're just comparing back and forth, and maybe the better way to do this would be to copy this and plug this in here and then pull that down. So we're looking at heating and cooling. Um, with custom ground temperatures, we're reducing um, our heating actually uh, quite significantly. And that, that makes sense because uh, we're, um, our custom ground temperatures are warmer than the 18 degrees that Energy Plus would use, right? Um, overall warmer, generally warmer. So we're saving on heating costs in the winter. Um, and our cooling, um, goes up and it goes up quite a bit. And this is pretty obviously really impactful in a place like Phoenix where, um, and you know, here, I think obviously uh, there's probably some ground insulation, but maybe not so much, honestly, uh, because I don't know if in, in um, the hot, uh, probably in this case, I'll to, I'd have to dig into the IDF, there may not be ground insulation, which makes a huge difference. So, um, the increase in cooling demand makes a lot of sense because usually we would be, you know, or under the, the initial scenario without custom ground temperatures, basically simulating the ground at a constant 18 degrees through the entire year. Here, it's much warmer. Um, the ground temperature is much warmer. And in the summer, if we're simulating at 18, the heat just in the house has a direction to go, which is into the ground at a constant ground temperature of 18. Um, down here, it has a lot of area to just for the heat to flow out through the ground and be used as a heat sink. Um, whereas uh, in this case, where our ground temperatures are a little bit warmer, um, there's less of a less of a less of a path um, for the heat to go, uh, which is which is really interesting and a really important um, really important aspect of um, building modeling um, that. Uh, is sort of surprisingly hard to um, hard to calculate and hard to find. Uh, I think in my experience. So hopefully, um, this sort of set of tools in Gerboa helps uh, helps with that problem. Um, anything? Any questions that you all might have? Um, obviously please feel free to reach out through the contact information on Food for Rhino. Um, otherwise, I definitely direct you to the, um, the manual and documentation, uh, which I think includes um, most things, most sort of key things. Um, this is actually the, that, these are kind of the, basically the same results from that, uh, this example. Um, just showing the difference in, in UI. Um, this is a slightly um, different example looking at uh, zone comfort comparisons between custom ground temperatures and a free running building. Um, and uh, I would highly recommend that you scroll all the way to the end and click on uh, this link um, and you'll be rewarded with uh, a very cute video of